Hello everyone, this is Tamara with From the Treetop and I'm bringing you a tutorial for the Photoshop Elements 9 and 10 version of the Artist Workflow Volume 1 Action Set. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. The first action in the set is called Place, Blend, and Remove. Let's go ahead and play that now. Okay, it says choose a texture from your folder, then size as needed holding the shift key. It's a good idea to have a folder um, set aside with all your favorite textures in it and to have it in a location that'll be easy for you to find. So let's go ahead and press continue. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Illume texture from the new From the Treetop Textures 2 set. And it almost fits, but not quite. So holding my shift key, I'm just going to drag it to make sure I'm covering all the edges. Okay, when I'm done, I can press enter or I can just double click. Okay, now the action is doing its work over here. You'll see in your layers palette, it's creating all these great blend mode layers for you. Um, and it also has created a remove texture layer and a texture color and replacement layer. Um, one of the things that I always do when I use textures is I don't use one layer of texture. I usually use a couple of layers with different blend modes and this is really what's going to get you the most detail in the image. It's okay to use overlay and soft light but if you want something different and more dramatic it's fun to experiment. The default setting will be overlay at 80 percent and um, you'll know that it's on because you can see the little icon here and you can just toggle that off and on and you can toggle off and on with the different modes together or separate to see which one interests you. In this case, I know I'm going to be using the overlay mode and the hard light blend mode. I'm going to bring that hard light blend mode down a bit. I've got it at about 65% and my overlay is set still to 80. Okay, let's go ahead and select that remove texture layer, making sure we have the black layer mask thumbnail highlighted. And with a soft white brush, make sure that that hardness is set to zero. We're going to go ahead and start removing that unwanted texture. I like to begin with my brush set to a 50% opacity so that I'm not leaving any harsh lines. I don't want you to be able to see where the texture ends or begins because that's really not desirable. So let's go ahead and just carefully go over. And now that I've gotten it off of the main areas, I'm going to come back up, set my brush to 100%. With my bracket keys, I'm going to make my brush a bit smaller and concentrate just on the skin and face to make sure I've gotten all of that off. Okay, now that it's off, it looks really good, but I've lost some of the warmth from the texture. So let's select our texture, color, and tone replacement layer. Again, making sure that black thumbnail selected with the white, we've already got our white brush and, uh, ready. Let's just go ahead and start painting back that tone and color. And this is also something you can edit. That's also set to a default for overlay. You can also change the blend mode or the opacity if it's a little too bright or not, not bright enough. Okay, so we have our texture placed and we have the unwanted texture removed. Um, one of the features that I added in this action set is the ability to get rid of some of these layers that you're not going to use. I know that you know in Photoshop we have the ability to create folders so it keeps things a little more simple. In Elements we don't. So all these additional blend modes that we're not going to use sometimes they just make you know make it more confusing. So to clean that up if you know you're not going to use any of those you can come up to the delete hidden button which is delete hidden layers and just click on that and it cleans it right up for you so you don't have as many layers open. Okay, so the next action is the light and shadows. Let's go ahead and play that. And what it's doing is it's creating several layers for us. Uh, it says paint on your desired effect with a soft white brush. Press continue. Uh, we have the option to paint on color, paint off color, contrast, shadows, midtones, and light. I'm going to go ahead and add some midtones back onto her face because I think she got a little washed out. And of course, these are kind of set high in the default, you know, to 100%. So you can come and pull it down a bit if it's a little too much. I already think it already looks so much nicer. Let's paint a little color back onto her face. because She lost some color. She was a little pale. And this is a little strong. So we're going to go ahead and pull that down. And maybe even take and remove a little bit if we get too much on the hair. There we go. Okay. Alright, 
right, so that part's done. Um, now, the one thing that I always use and one thing that I created that I just love is the, the action called the pinched cheeks. And the reason for this is I get a lot of compliments on my skin tones. And uh, one of the reasons I think I do is because I do use this action. I don't try to warm up all of the skin because it creates kind of an artificial sunburned look sometimes. And honestly, her skin is beautiful the way it is, but she looks a little pale because she needs a little flush in her cheeks. So let's go ahead and choose the little icon that has the cute little girl with the rosy cheeks. Press play. And it's prompting us to paint on cheeks and lips with a soft white brush. Again, this is going to be dramatic, so we have to use caution that we don't overdo it. But go ahead and um, paint it on. I don't think she needs it on her lips because honestly, she her lips look pretty good to me. And then just pull, pull it back. We don't want to look like grandma with the rosy rouge. There we go. So it really makes a difference. It may be hard to see on your monitor, but it does. It really brightens her up, gives her a lot of life in her face without having to change any of her other skin tones. Okay, so the next step is going to be to choose a vintage tone. You could use vintage tones or you could leave it just the way it is. I really love playing with these vintage tones because you can use them together individually and get all different looks from this one edit. I'm going to go ahead and choose the Gossamer Wings tone. That's kind of a vintage hazy tone. It's one of my favorites. Um, if you find that some of these tones, I'm going to pull the opacity back. If you find that some of these tones are a bit too hazy, you can always drag them underneath your light and shadows layers and continue to edit uh, your contrast and your uh, mid-tones and shadows that way. Okay, so I have the Gossamer wings and I think it looks beautiful. I'm really happy with it. Let's look at what we began with. Here was our original picture and here is our edit with our textures and it just it makes you know I think it creates a lot of drama and that's what I like in my images. I love dramatic imagery. So um, let me go ahead and show you a few more things about the action set. The quick black and white will do just that. It will create a fast black and white for you. The beauty of it is you can also add a tone Let's say we wanted to add the beach keen tone on top of the black and white to give us a different um, look. Or let's see, let's get rid of that one. Let's try, um, let's try the sepia. And then we have that and on and on and you can use them together or separate. It's really a fun action to play with. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. There are three actions in the set that are going to require to, you to use them on a flattened file. If you don't use them on a flattened file, you're either going to get the wrong effects, no effects, or an error. Uh, those three actions will have a small red leaf icon on them. They're the add detail, the sharpen, and the glow. The add detail is going to add detail in the shadows. The uh, sharpen is just a normal sharpen, sharpen and defog, and the glow is going to add a beautiful ethereal glow to the image. So um, I've also added a duplicate, uh, duplicate image uh, button here so that if we wanted to flatten and try something different but we're not sure we're done, we don't have to be worried about losing our work. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my image. I'm going to flatten it and I'm going to run the add glow. Okay, and the glow is very dramatic, so I'm going to bring it back. I usually use it at about a 30 to 40 percent um, opacity. And one of the things I like to do after adding glow is to run the cool down tone and bring it down to about 10 to 15 percent. And there you are. There's our final edit. I hope that you enjoy these, these actions. I hope that it helps you achieve things with textures that have been difficult for you to do in the past, and I hope you have fun. Talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.